Hello everyone, welcome back to my review for Handmaid's Tale. This is episode six, Household. I'm a little late with this one, but I still wanna share my thoughts with you guys. And as usual, tell me in the comments below, what did you think of tonight's episode? And don't forget, consider clicking on that subscribe button and that bell in order to hear any more content from me for your future enjoyment. The premise of this episode is pretty straightforward. You have June going along with the Waterfords as they travel to Washington, D.C., trying to negotiate with the Canadians in order to try to get Nicole back into Gilead. So instead of just giving you a rundown of this episode and my thoughts on it, I feel with all the visuals and symbolism involved, and yes, certain characters I will talk about, and just some betrayal that I felt, I think this episode stands out compared to past ones and even in the past seasons because we're taking a look outside of Gilead. We're in Washington, D.C., and we're seeing how they handle this new society they've created in this new America. The characters I do want to mention, first, June, you get that little glimmer of hope again with her with the moment where those delegates from the Canadian and Swiss governments, they ask to talk to her alone and the Waterfords were insisting that they be with her. And it's just great that they insisted just her. And it felt like for once she can actually speak her mind and tell them what she feels about all this. She tells them that's her baby. And, you know, she just tells it like it is. And I'm glad she did. And, you know, she walks out of that office, you know, happy that, you know, she said what she had to say. And, you know, hopefully there's more of a glimmer of hope for her in order for them to keep Nicole in Canada. But even though she gets that moment to shine through talking to the delegates, it doesn't go so well with her and Nick, which was another character I wanna mention. Nick, you get that little twist at the end where you find out he had quite a past with Gilead. And this is the betrayal for one of these characters I'm talking about. We have been on this guy's side. He looked like a good guy the entire time. I kinda compare him to uh, Daenerys in Game of Thrones how at the very last few episodes she's all of a sudden a, a villain you know they turned that character around completely and I kind of feel that's the same way with Nick Nick has always been in my eyes a good guy and then now we've learned here that he's done more evil than you could possibly think of before he became a driver for the Waterfords I feel now the only characters we can really trust are June Luke and anyone else that's in Canada everyone else is just bad news and not only with Nick, but I also feel betrayed by Serena, which I already mentioned in the last episode review, that she's now more insistent on getting Nicole back, and she's on her husband's side and trying to make this happen. And, you know, June is just, she's frustrated, and we can all understand why, because they we thought they were friends, and now she's off doing this in Washington, and she will do whatever it takes in order to get Nicole back. On the other side of the spectrum, though, there is Aunt Lydia, someone that I have mostly hated during the last few seasons. And now, in this episode, with a specific scene where her and June are having a conversation, and June asks her, do you wish us handmaids to be silent? Because this is kind of going go into what I'm talking about, the visuals and the symbolism, but they have those masks that all the handmaids wear in Washington, where it covers their face up to their nose. and that's symbolizing that they have no voice, they're supposed to be silent, and June asks that to Aunt Lydia, and Aunt Lydia says, no, of course not. So you can see that being here in Washington is kind of opening her eyes, and you, she can see that they're taking it too far, and I think it's almost making her realize that everything that's been happening, even in Gilead possibly, that it's not how it should be, and you can tell that June and Aunt Lydia are actually starting to become close friends because now Aunt Lydia can sympathize with June and she's more than just a handmaid to her. There are four symbolism slash visuals I wanna talk about. One was the fact that the beginning of the episode where June's on the train, she sees out the window the Washington Monument and it's been transformed into a cross. Now I'm a Christian, so when I see that, that is a reflection of what I believe in. And in this world, it's supposed to be that you're only meant to be a Christian and nothing else, but that's what America's all about. We have the freedom to believe in whatever we want to believe. And even though to idolize something is wrong for a certain religion, you know that would be appropriate, but it just seeing that and the type of world, the way they're running it, was very disturbing and it just didn't seem right. So that's kind of obvious symbolism there. They're trying to say that this is the new America now and everyone here is Christian. The second thing I noticed in regards to symbolism, and this is kind of an obvious one, were the handmaids in Washington where they wore those masks. And I know I kind of mentioned that already with the conversation between June and Aunt Lydia. 
And this is obviously symbolizing that women are meant to be silent and they go as far as actually stapling these women's mouths shut and you see Aunt Lydia kind of like take a peek behind one of the masks and she sees that and that's just so degrading and disgusting for them to do that. That's just so like, it's, it's disturbing that this new founded America did this to these women because to them they don't have a voice, they don't have a way to really speak their mind and they're only meant to do one thing, which is produce children. The third thing I noticed, and I think this might be something that I noticed personally, maybe you guys noticed too, and that was the scene where they're in that one specific building where they have the statue of the gigantic wings, and they have one part where Mr. Waterford's standing behind it, and they have a shot of him where it looks like it's his wings, and they do that again with June later on, and it looks like she's the one with wings. And I think of it this way, with Mr. Waterford with those wings, it almost seems like a self-ego thing for him and that's what we're seeing as the audience member. He feels he's one of these almost saints, these type of people that's part of Gilead that is here to bring this new nation forward in this religion. And then when you have June, you see her and she's almost like the savior that we do need to rise up against Gilead. So you see like two opposite sides here, but that's something that I noticed and I thought was pretty cool because with the, the way the camera was on these characters with the wings behind them, I think it was it was kind of obvious that they were doing that on purpose. The last one that I found the most insightful was the scene between Serena and June when they're at the Lincoln Memorial. Now, we all know what the Lincoln Memorial is. If you've been to Washington, D.C., it has the statue of Lincoln sitting in that chair, and it symbolizes freedom because Lincoln was the president that ended slavery during the Civil War, and that monument stands for freedom for everyone. As June's looking at it, half of the statue has been mutilated. And, you know, those two are just arguing about how June feels betrayed by Serena and they're talking about what's going to happen next. But what I found the most interesting was how that statue was destroyed and what it meant. It's symbolizing in this time of America that freedom is no longer a luxury for anyone, especially for these handmaids. They don't have freedom, they don't have a voice. They don't, you know, they don't have a right to do whatever they want to now. They're in the hands of these other people. So I feel that overall, this whole journey to Washington, D.C. has all been about just betrayal, no freedom for these women at all, and how the women in, in Washington, D.C., the handmaids there, how their lives are probably 10 times worse than the ones in Gilead, and the ones in Gilead are already dealing with their own nightmare. I just think overall this is probably one of the best episodes we've seen so far this season. I just like it when shows or movies do that type of thing where they show something without any dialogue necessary to be said what is happening. You just have an object or a person doing something and there it says it all. And I just felt that this episode did a lot of that. But tell me in the comments below what you think of tonight's episode. If there's any symbolism that you did see that maybe I didn't see, or if you agree with any of the things that I mentioned, I'd love to hear your opinions. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give it a like. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe to hear any more reviews from me. Next week I will have episode seven review. Hopefully I'll have it up the same day as the episode airs, but stay tuned for that. You'll have a great day. Until next time.